Arfield. What a bowling! Scott Arfield! He's been threatening that recently. And all the Burnley players run to the Darwin end. Burnley win the next ball. It's a Rory now. It's on the outside. He's on the Quickly finds Benson in space at the byline. Can Burnley get a goal here? Back for Brownell. Saved by the keeper. Yeah! Burnley won it to the end. That is magnificent. They deserve that. Only by Paul Fatella. Off for a hat trick. He's got it. Hat trick for Nathan Fatella. Oh, he's on fire at the minute. 3 0 Burnley. It's Nathan Fatella's day. And he's on the outside, comes inside, comes up, he's shot, oh what a goal, Manuel Benson once more, that is top class, Burnley have done it, fantastic, Clarence deserves the championship title, they've been the best side throughout the campaign, Burnley have won the second tier, what a fantastic achievement, the players have been magnificent. Yes, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome along to another instalment of the Turfcast podcast pre-game show with me, Joe Emin, as we look ahead to our first trip to the Kassam Stadium since the 1999-2000 season. It's a ground that a lot of Berlin fans have been very excited to go to, as a lot of us, myself included, have never been before and it's a ground where we can tick off uh, a new ground, and there might only be three stands, but who cares if you're leaving with three points? And fingers crossed we do, but I'm sure our guests today will have something to say about that, because as usual, we always have an opposition fan on the show, and I'm pleased to introduce Simon from the Fence End Podcast. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, very well. Yourself? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. Just finished a 12-hour shift at work, so um, relatively tired, but we crack on, mate. I seem to be doing a lot of these podcasts after the 12-hour shift at work, <laughs> um, but that's just the way life is, isn't it? I kind of think sometimes with these podcasts, I don't know about yourself, that I've bitten off more than I can chew when I'm having to do all these shows, and then next week I've got to do the Plymouth one. They're not, oh, mental, mate, mental, but cross that bridge when we come to it. But anyway, let's talk about Oxford. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't do pre uh, sort of like pre-season previews on on this show, but I did get asked to go on to a couple of people's. And um, look, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people predicted the same thing. I have Oxford going down. I have been very very surprised by how well you have done, and you've done absolutely fantastic. Obviously, played six, won three. Every single home game you have won. That includes mm. victories against Stoke, Preston, North End, and Norwich. Norwich, no decent side. Stoke and Preston, you would suspect, might be down there with you. But Norwich, a good side. So tell me, mate, how has this season been so far for you? I bet you, I bet you're absolutely loving it. Yeah, yeah, it exceeded expectations. I think you know the the when the season started, everyone would have taken survival by a point. And and now, I mean, we're not getting carried away by any stretch. Only six games into the season, we're not going. Oh well, maybe we, you know, survival is is still in most people's minds. Survival would be a successful season, but it, it's it has certainly started better than than I think a lot of fans thought. And and yeah, it, 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 the home form, especially you know that that home form, we've been maybe a little bit lucky. Norwich, we played them first game of the season, and one of their players, I think, on the on the morning of the game, wanted a move, so didn't. You know, it was the the yeah. three teams we've played. There's an argument to say they weren't in perfect sort of uh, mental states and 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 sort of uh, managers leaving all that. So it, it you know that's helped us a bit. But equally, we've, we you can only beat what's put in front of you, and we've we've done that at home. Exactly that, and like I said, you have been very impressive. Um, we have touched on it. You've won every single home game so far. Why do you think the Kassam has been such a fortress for you so far this season? Is it because the fans are really, really up for it? Yeah, it. You'll you'll see when you you know those fans that come to the game on Saturday, the the atmosphere is not too bad. When when the place is full, which which it has been in the past for you know big games, local derbies, cup games, stuff like that, it, it you can get a little bit of an atmosphere going. Um, you know, it's 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 not the most atmospheric ground in the world by any stretch of the imagination. And when there's six, seven, eight, nine thousand in there, it's a bit. Mm, but 
fill the place and, and the atmosphere is good. And, and we got to a point sort of towards the end of our, sort of two thirds of the way through last season where the club and the fans felt a little bit of disconnection um, and, and the fans, you know, a couple of fans groups got together, right, let's make an atmosphere. Let's do something in these last push for the playoffs and all of that sort of stuff. And since then, the atmosphere really has improved. And it, yeah, it's rubbed off on the players. They've, they've responded and it's, we're kind of riding a bit of a, a wave at the moment with it. Yeah, I think definitely that sums it up perfectly, riding on the crest of a wave at the minute. Interesting you mentioned there about fans groups getting together and improving the atmosphere because there has been some question marks from Burnley fans about the Burnley atmosphere recently. But then as soon as that, people try and put something together, people don't want to know. Um, but that's that's a different debate. Um, just obviously the, the the flip side of your home form has been the away form, which has been pretty poor. Mm. Um, I think you've lost against Blackburn. I remember that one because you scored that worldie and I was absolutely yeah. fuming that you threw it away. Um, Coventry as well. I can't remember the one off the top of my head. Forgive me. Uh, Bristol City, last time yeah. out. Um, why do you think you've not been so good on the road then? I, th- I think in 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 all all of the games, there's you know individual errors and in 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 the first two, a penalty decision in the Bristol City game, and in all three we've only lost by the odd goal. Um, and and the first two, the Coventry game, the Blackburn game, were kind of goals going into added time at the end of the game that we conceded and it's we've we've been close in those those away games with a little bit of luck could have you know yielded three points quite easily maybe five with a bit of luck you know it's we've not been out beaten out of sight away from home yet um I'm sure that'll happen at some point you know that's as football but it's we feel a little bit unlucky with some of those results um not getting you know like I say one or two points at least in those games. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, you mentioned earlier it is early days and you have exceeded expectations. Obviously, I'm sure the um, aim for you as fans and the club will just be to survive. That won't have changed. But has your opinion on whether or not you can do it now, has that changed? Do you think Oxford can stay up? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling more confident about it now than than I was before the season started. Um, I've got a, a a good mate who's a Stoke fan um, and speaking to him sort of during the summer, he'd seen us play in, in a few games on TV mm. when we were in League One. And he said, you'll be fine. He said, you know, I've seen you play. You play a decent brand of football, strengthen in the summer, you'll be fine. You know, there's there's basket, basket gates clubs in the league, in the championship. You'll you'll be all right. And, and you know, sure enough, one of those was Stoke. It was kind of, I don't yeah. think you expect this to be it, but, you know, it, it does feel like actually we've recruited really well. We've got a young manager who's, a you know, uh, came through the academy as a youngster, then gone on a bit of a world tour and has come back to us as as his first job in in England as a as a first team manager and it just feels lots of positivity around the club and and like I say the recruitment's been really good but we've we've also kept the spine of the side from League One the goalkeeper the two mm. centre halves Cameron Brannigan in midfield when he's fit he, he's probably going to miss six weeks the centre forward are all players that we had last season and and in previous seasons to that as well and it it feels like We've not just gone right. We're in the championship. We've got to get rid of players and bring a whole new squad in. It's we've we've added to a to a core group in there, and the recruitment's been really good. I've been really impressed with the recruitment, and it's it's going okay. Yeah. So talk to me about that team then. What what sort of players should Burnley fans be looking out for? Because I'll be honest, myself, I don't know too much about the individuals that you've got. So what sort of players should we, should we should, sorry should we be looking out for at the weekend? <laughs> Um, from an attacking point of view, um, Mark Harris, you mentioned the goal he scored against Blackburn, you know, and, and he's a, he scored four, he scored in each of the first four games, um, which, you know, last season he scored until the end of August, then didn't score again until January and still ended up with about 19 goals or something. You know, it was a really bizarre sort of goal scoring season for him, but he works hard, absolutely, you know, a pest, got an eye for goal as well. And then, so he plays up front as on his own, but we've then got kind of three attack-minded players around him. Tyler Goodrum's a young um, Oxford lad, came through the academy, and I'm sure in a couple of seasons he'll be playing in the Premier League. You know, if that's with us, great. But if not, he's certainly going to go on and, and he's a real talented footballer, um, scores 
world is scores you know he's, mm. he's got a decent sort of uh probably 10 or 15 for us in in the last season or or so um and towards the end of the transfer window bought in Sir Ricky Dembele from Birmingham and he he looks a real handful quick ridiculously quick feet and and got a shot on him as well and I think that kind of we defensively we're solid as well um yeah. we 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 look kind of Elliot Maud's the captain. It's tall. We like to play possession football, um, but but when we do go forward, we, I think we, we we scored in every game so far this season. So it's you know there's a there's a goal scoring threat as well. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a nice brand of football. We, we like I say we try and play it around at the back, keep possession, and we, but but try and move the opposition about to then break. Uh, when we do break, we break quickly. Yeah, well, that was my next question about your style of play because, again, not seen too much of Oxford, so I do want to get more about your style of play. You mentioned their possession football. Is it the mm. type of football where it's possession for possession's sake or is it possession with a purpose? It, Des Buckingham, the, the manager, was on one of the local radio stations this morning and it's one of those things he said, you know, it is possession, but it's it's pointless if you're not trying to do something with it. And it is possession yeah. with a purpose, you know, with, I think it's that trying to move teams around, um, you know, pull players out, try and get them to close you down and then play through them if you can. Both Des and Liam Manning before him both came through the city group, um, the, you know, the Man City group of clubs. Yeah. So I think there's a kind of a bit of a style that those city groups try and play, obviously the pep way, you know, which is, it's great if you've got the players to do it, not so much if if you're trying yeah, to play. We saw you a know. lot of that with Vincent Company, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's it, if you've got the players that can do it, it's fine, you know. Um, but if if you haven't, it, it can be a recipe for disaster. But so it's it's you know, I, I'm not saying we're Man City by any stretch of the imagination, but it's that kind of we're 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 certainly happy to play the ball and not just have a shot if it's not on. We'll we'll you know we'll play the ball. Sometimes it, it can be frustrating because you get into good positions and you think, get a crossing, get a shot in, yeah, and it ends yeah. up going back to the centre halves. But if it's gone back to the centre halves quick enough to then, you know, change the angle of attack and it, it comes to something, then that's one of those sort of you get used to it now. I think football football has changed. I mean, you know, we've been going for forty odd years and it's it's a different game to how it was. But yeah. but equally, it's it, you know, if it's played the right way and we and we do try and play the right way, it's it's good to watch. Yeah, I think a lot of Burnley fans can relate to that. Obviously, the possession style that Vincent Company brought was fantastic in the Championship because we had the players to do it, but then we tried to do it in the Premier League and, and you saw what happened last season in the Premier League. It, it did not go well. Um, obviously, you've, we've talked about sort of like the, the teams that you've played and I, I don't want to come across as arrogant because I'm not in any stretch of the imagination. I think this weekend is going to be a tough game, but you haven't played a team as good as Burnley yet. I think, I think that would be fair to say. Um, yeah. Do you think you can do this possession style and, and this certain style with um, against us with the players that you've got? Yeah, I, I, it's at the moment it's the only way we know how to play, I, I, and I think you know as a manager, Des, and, and as a club, I think you know you, you've you you want to develop a style of play, and and yeah. if it's not going to work, well, it might not work against everybody, but but equally, there you know you might as well. If it works for ninety five percent of the game's fine, you know, rather than changing it for the for for the odd game here or there, and try and play in a way that doesn't suit the players. You know, like I say, Mark Harris up front, he's probably six foot, but he's not a big centre forward that you can just be knocking balls into. So we've got to play in a way that suits the players. We've got everybody's comfortable on the ball, so why not play that that kind of quick quick passing when we do break. Um, um, like you say, I think I think for a lot of fans, we've looked at this game and gone, OK, as you say, the teams that we've played, you know, Blackburn have had a good start to the season. But but no, I don't think... Yeah, yeah, sorry. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, said, I was careful what I said there. But, but yeah, not, you know, we, we've not played Leeds, Burnley, you know, or Sunderland or, you know, the, the, the big clubs. But equally, you know, we've there's been a little bit of a social media thing amongst Oxford fans of teams like Oxford. And, and mm. when we've beaten... Norwich and we've beaten Stoke and we've you get the well we, you know the opposition fans we should be beating teams like Oxford if we want to do well and it's we're wearing it as a bit of a badge of honour it's like okay underestimate yeah. us if you want you know and we're all where we deserve to be in the division we you know we've we've got where we are through through playing the way we can it 
it, I think this will show us how how far we have come. You know, if we can if we can give you a game, if we if we can get a point or three or not get embarrassed, you know, not get absolutely stuffed. I, I think fans would would probably take that. It, you know, it will show, like you say, a Premier League club up until very recently, huge amounts of money come in through transfer fees and gone out and whatever and all of that. It's we're playing in the big boys league now a little bit and it it, it will I think it will show where we've how far we've come. Yeah, again, I think a lot of Burnley fans will be able to relate to that teams like Oxford thing. Obviously, we get that when we're in the Premier mm. League. Um, yeah. And a tweet that I had about 15 minutes before coming on here, it wasn't a response to my tweet. It was a response to a tweet that somebody tagged me in it. And the, it made me laugh when you said that because the first line of that, I won't mention his name so you don't find it and, <laughs> yeah. and screenshot it. Um, but it, the first line of that is, we should be beating teams like this comfortably. Um, yeah. But again, I, I think the majority of Burnley fans are expecting a game this weekend, especially considering with how well you've done at home. Are you expecting the manager to, to keep that style of play? Then is that basically what you're saying? I, I mean, yeah. I, there was quite a lot made recently about teams playing out from the back. There's been a lot of examples of teams getting it wrong. Uh, Uddersfield, um, away at Bolton, or I can't remember where. Um, and Watford last night against Man City. Mm. And I can understand the argument for changing the style of play when you're playing against these teams that are better than you. And if you go taught at all with them, then they end up beating you. But at the same time, you don't want to bring in bad habits, do you? Or play in a style that, that doesn't suit your no. players. And I think that's that's basically what you're saying, isn't it? You, you, you'll, you'll suspect that Des will be going for the possession football yeah. and, and maybe pressing us. Yeah, especially at home as well. You know, like I said, that Norwich game, I think sh shocked is perhaps not the right word. Pleasantly surprised everyone that, wow, we, you know, we can play possession football against the side that nearly got promoted last season. You mm. know, they got to the playoffs. There are... So yeah, it's it's the way he wants to play, um, and I don't think he'll he'll change that. They'll be tinkering, maybe a little bit tactically to to try and counter, you know, the, the the better teams that you know. But but equally, I think he's got a way that he wants to play. Um, it took him a while when he came in after Liam Manning left. It took. He, he said at the afterwards that he should have implemented what he wanted right from the start he tried because we'd had a good start to the season under Manning he tried to continue what he was doing rather than yeah. putting his own you know right no we'll, we'll do what I want right from the start he kind of thought it's not broken I won't try and fix it but it didn't kind of work for him trying to do it how the previous manager had done it and it took a while for it to to, to bear fruit but it has you know with the with the promotion and, and beating Bolton after sort of a few weeks earlier they'd beaten us 5-0 at their place and then we mm. completely outplayed them at Wembley it, it, it was all I think that Wembley game suddenly made Oxford fans think crikey no he's 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 a he's a manager here and it's we've gone from managers leaving us and going down the divisions to now he's he's being talked about when any championship club gets rid of a manager the he's he's sort of one of the favorites for to go elsewhere so it's 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 a nice Nice thing to have people want your manager, and I think he's he's shown in little well less than a year in the in English football that he knows what he's doing, and it it does seem to be yeah it's it's a pleasant surprise, but but it's a nice surprise. Yeah, I think a lot of Burnley fans uh, will echo these sentiments when I say congratulations on beating Bolton. That was actually <laughs> hilarious. Thank you for that. Um, I did enjoy that as well. Um, any injuries or suspensions that um, we need to be aware of? Yeah, um, so Cameron Brannigan, who's been at the club six odd years now, he, you know, in League One, he, he had two or three opportunities to leave when we we're in League One and go to Championship clubs, and he didn't want to go. He he, he loves it here, um, and he was injured in the Preston game, um, so he's going to be out for a while. Um, and Josh McEachran. He was injured in the Bristol City game. So two sort of midfielders who play in quite similar roles. So it's going to be interesting to see. McEachran might be fit for Saturday. Um, Brannigan definitely won't be. So I think the midfield might be an interesting one to look at to see what he does there. Um, Idris El Mazzuni, we, we brought in from Ipswich. He'd been on loan at uh, Orient. Didn't start at the beginning of the season, but he's started the last couple of games and looks good. Um, Will Volks might come in, so it, he or he might do something a little, you know, a bit different and and maybe a slight change in formation. But I doubt it. I think it'll just be a case of finding, you know, the right players to to fit into that role. 
that kind of slightly more defensive midfield role. Yeah, interesting that because I do feel midfield is is we are bereft of options. Bereft is not the right. We have got loads of options. Is what I'm trying to say. I said the exact yeah. opposite. We've got <laughs> too many options um, at midfield at the minute. There's a bit debate, bigger, a bit of a debate on the hashtags and the and the message boards about who can we play in midfield because you know we've got Colin who's a fantastic midfielder and won the championship player of the year uh, the last time he was in the championship, but hasn't really been playing that well recently. Just come back from an injury and didn't look great against Portsmouth. Then you've got Josh Brownhill who can play in the 10 role, probably better th than he plays in the, in the six role um, or in the eight role as well. He can play the box to box, but um, obviously got the goal at the weekend. And then you've got Loren who's come in from Stoke. He's looked very good. And then you've got Hannibal who's, who's probably not as good on the ball, mm. Um, but he can put himself about a bit and it depends on what sort of style the game is, I think, for our midfield. So it's going to be interesting to see what we do in midfield. Uh, and I just want to quickly go back to uh, Josh McEachern. I did not know he played for you. Um, obviously came through the ranks at Chelsea, was meant to be mm. the next big thing when I was at university. Um, I always remember that... Um, Chant, I won't say it on here because I'll get demonetized. But uh, <laughs> Josh McEachern having a party and the stuff that he texts to the party. Um, did not know he played there, so that's a blast yeah. from the past. Is he is he any good? Because, like I said, back then it was meant to be the, the next big yeah. thing, potentially playing for England and stuff like he, that. He's a, he's a local lad, he's an Oxford lad. Um, he? so right. he, he, you know, like I say, he was he was going to be the next big thing at Chelsea, it didn't kind of work for him. He came, th came to us, um, beginning of last season and I, I, it, he he did okay you know you, you can see there's quality there and and yeah. it just but at times you kind of thought has his you know have his legs gone he didn't look like you know he was maybe it was a, a season too late but and, and and in the summer i think if he'd have gone you know if we'd have released him i think nobody would have been that surprised but he's played and played really well um this season and and you maybe it's because Although the you know yeah championship is quick and and there's lots of pace involved, it might be that the the more tactical side of it rather than yeah. you know up after teams in League One just want to kick you up in the air and it, it it might be that he's got that little he's got that extra bit of quality and equally the players around him have got that quality where they'll make the run knowing he's going to find them with a pass and yeah. maybe at, at League One level slightly lesser players you you know nobody's making the run that he can then find you with a pass. So he's, yeah, yeah. He's really impressed this, this season. I think it surprised a few people that he, that he stayed, but he's done a really good job. Um, like I say, maybe might be out on Saturday, but it's not a yeah. long-term one. He should be back for Tuesday or the following week. Yeah. Well, that's a bit of a shame. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing him and seeing what he's like these days, but fingers crossed I get to see him at the turf in the return fixture. Um, what sort of game are you expecting then on Saturday? Are you, are you expecting two teams end to end, free flowing attacking football? You're expecting a little bit more conservative. I'm, it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's 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 difficult to know. I've not you know not seen you play this season, so it's a, a little bit of an unknown in in terms of of, of style. But um, I, yeah, it'll it'll be a, it'll be a, a, a good game. Um, you know, obviously you've got that quality. Scored a lot of goals. At the start, of the first two games of the season, five and four, mm. and then it's maybe not quite as free flowing at the moment. And I know one of one of our George Ellick, who does the not the top yeah. twenty pod, is an Oxford fan, and he, you know, yeah. it was one of the things last season. He was he's very much into the XG and and that kind of thing. And and at the beginning of last season, he was sort of saying how Oxford were overachieving in terms. You know, we were winning games, but the XG was quite low. And I think he's kind of looked at. Burnley had said a similar thing. It's not, you know, you, you you're not dominating games necessarily, but you you're getting the results and and certainly the, the big goals. You know, lots of goals early in the season. It, it's kind of not reflective of the xG. Yeah, you know, it, it's too. It, sometimes it can be a bit like too many statistics, and it's it, you know, let's simplify it. But but I think there is a certain there's a place for that where sometimes you can look at it and go, okay, they're not getting many chances and they're scoring every chance they get. That can't yeah. go on through the rest of the season. So, you know, it, it, it'll be, yeah, I'm, like I said, looking forward to it purely from a, okay, we're now playing a, a side that, that clearly are one of the promotion, you know, favourites. And and how are we going to get up against them? You know, now the season's really underway. Transfer window's closed. Everyone's settled in and we've we played half a dozen games. You kind of get a feel for for the quality. 
Yeah, fair enough. It's worth pointing out, obviously, you mentioned the two games at the start of the season. That team has since been decimated. Half of the players mm. that started their games no longer play for Burnley. And I think that we've brought this new team in. It's taken a while to bed, hence why we're not dominating the games like we did earlier in the season. Uh, but it's interesting, again, you brought up the XG debate because there's been a bit of that on the Burnley hashtag. Um, some people just not happy with the fact that we're winning games and they want to see us create more chances, which, again, some people will see that as a bit dismissive of just enjoy the win, which is what I feel mm. immediately after the win. Um, but I do sometimes think, well, yeah, you can't continuously outperform your XG. You've got to, yeah. you've got to at least meet in the middle. But at least it does show we are clinical at the minute. Um, mm. But I do sometimes question the metric, even though I do like the metric because we had like, I think it was four one on ones or three one on ones that we scored from in the first two games, and overall that came to an XG of like zero point four or something from them three chances. And sometimes like that, I think you've got to, yes, the stats do tell a story, but also try and watch the game with your eyes and, and blend the two together. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do something I don't normally do on these podcasts. I'm going to ask you about Oxford as a city and what it's like for away mm. fans because obviously Burnley fans haven't been there for so long. I'm going on Saturday. I can't wait. I'm taking my little boy. He's properly getting into it now. Um, he's only six, but he's properly getting into it. I took him to Leeds and he loved it and he's got a season ticket this year for the first time. Um, I'm going to be driving down, I think, after looking at the prices mm. of the trains. Is that the best option <laughs> or, would, or would you suggest it's... trains would be best? Because even the train station looks about an hour away, doesn't it? It, it is. I mean, by, in terms of parking at the stadium, no problem at all. As you know, we've got a car park, the car park end or the fence end. There's, yeah. you know, there's plenty, plenty of car parking and and it's free. So, you know, not a problem parking at the ground. That. Yeah, One thing I would do, though, is, is if you can get there, early, the, 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 there's buses um, back into the city because drinking around the stadium itself isn't great. Um, and, you know, Oxford is obviously there's there's the university and the, and the centre of town is is fantastic. And there's there are some yeah. wonderful pubs. And if, you know, just wandering around the city itself is is you know, a, a good day out of the weather's nice, especially. Um, so yeah, drinking around the grounds not great. Um, there's, there's a kind of a, a, a cinema and bowling alley complex right by the ground, and there there is there's a bar in there, um, which is fine if you know if you if you can't get in the town. But but there are buses that run back into into the city um, very frequently, and then and the same back out again. So. I, you know, if fans have got the time to to get there early, certainly have a drink in town and and then make your way up to the ground that way. Well, I think I'll be doing just that, obviously with limitation because I'll be driving back. Yeah, I mean, um, what sort of time would you recommend getting there? Then, nice and early, you said about eleven. Is that was that too? Early? Yeah, that, too that, that should be right. Now, I think on match day, I know they did introduce some parking restrictions, but I think it's four hours before the the, the game. So yeah, it, because. You know, we're selling out um, the home games so far this season. The, the, the car parks do get get full fairly quickly. Um, but yeah. yeah, if you're there off, you know, between 11 and 12, you, you're no problem getting a parking space um, at all. Um, and and yeah, either from there, bit of <laughs> you can walk through to Blackbird Lees and get the buses into town from there because they run every five or ten minutes. Whereas if you wait by the ground, the buses there are about every half an hour so just a, a sort of a 10 minute walk through to Knights Road on Blackbird Lees and, and the buses go straight down into town and uh, and the same on the way back loads of buses yeah you mentioned obviously the main pubs in the town centre which which sort of ones are the best for away fans um most of them are fine there's one or two if you're wearing colours they might not let you I and mean, that tends to be the, the kind of the Weatherspoons and Yates's but there are there's some fantastic old pubs, the Bear, the Wheat Sheaf, the Eagle and Child, the um, um, what is it, the Lamb and Flag. There's, but all around the centre of Oxford, the Checkers, the Turf Tavern, are kind of, you know, very historic pubs and, and they've been around, you know, they all, I think they all try and be the oldest pub in Oxford, you know, well, we've been here since 1300 and we've been here since 1200 and all of that sort yeah. of stuff but that you know yeah it's 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 worth a pub crawl or or even just a um you know just a, a, a not a beer crawl but the, the pubs themselves <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pl plenty of pubs all within walking distance of sort of the, the center of oxford so yeah and and the university's just walking up and down the high street and and around carfax and stuff to you know see the see the architecture it's fantastic yeah, I definitely think I'll do that. I like the name of Turf Tavern. That that sounds mm. like a great yeah, pub for Burnley fans. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah. 
So we'll have a look down there. But thank you for that, mate. I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm going down. I've never been to the Kassam Stadium before. It's a new ground to me. Uh, for me, sorry, I think it takes me into the into the 70s out of the 92 for, for, right. the, for the ground. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we'll definitely be having a wander around Oxford if my six-year-old will let me because his legs might get tired and he might kick <laughs> off. Um, but we will see. Um, predictions for the game then, please, mate. What are your score predictions for the game? I'm I'm gonna as as I I said we we've scored in every game I think I think I'll put it as a scoring draw I thought I'd be happy with a score draw so one all one all fair enough I think for me teams like Oxford mate we've got no I'm joking <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's I'm expecting a tough game I'm expecting you to be up for it I'm expecting you know maybe even taking the lead and then seeing how we respond but obviously I wouldn't I'd rather it be playing sailing but football's never like that I am a little bit worried about the fact that you've scored in every single game I am a little bit worried about your home form as well um, but I've got to be back in Burnley um, to, to, to to beat you and I'm thinking 2-1 something close maybe 3-1 at a push um, we will see uh, I forgot to ask a question actually so I'll do it before we, before we go because we have just hit the half an hour mark um, and I, not to put you on the spot or anything so apologies if you know you haven't seen right. much of Burnley and you're, and you're not really aware of any, any standout players but is there any particular players that that you're a little bit worried about or on the flip side looking forward to watching? I'm just going to call up on my screen here. The players you saw, I mean, like I said, you, you know, you, the uh, the sort of money that you, you've spent on players, it's kind of like, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. I know you, you mentioned that Laurent from, from Stoke and I think he's, he's one... I've got a Stoke City supporting mate. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he, I think he's raved about him in the past. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, no, it, 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 I think a lot of our fans will be uh, quite interested in, in what Scott Parker's wearing because he does look he, do, he does look good on the touchline, doesn't he, Scott Parker? I yeah. think that will be the... Yeah, we'll be looking for the... It will be sartorial rather than uh, footballing. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Uh, but, yeah, it's been a bit of a, a thing about Scott Parker's attire. In the, in the first couple of games, he was wearing a bomber jacket and everyone was like, what's that brand? I've, ne I've never seen that brand before. And it was like this random brand and his bomber jacket were like two and a half grand. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I've since been wearing my bomber jacket to games, but mine's a 30 quid one from Top Man. I crack that joke on every single pre-game show, but I'm doing it for the benefit of you there, mate. Um, well, thank you, mate. Uh, I'll let you go then. Thank you for coming on. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. coming on late at night. It's pushing 10 p.m. now, mate. So I really do appreciate it. No, that's it. no problem at all. But uh, before I do wrap it up, do you want to let everyone know where they can find you and, and the Oxford content that you produce if people want to get any sort of like pre-game thoughts on the opposition mm. on on your channel? Yeah, we're on uh, the Fence End pod. So uh, on, on the usual channel, yeah, on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. But yeah, the, the, the Fence End pod. I love how everybody says Twitter or X or whatever it's called. Yeah. Nobody <laughs> just says on X because it's not so stupid. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to call it that, Elon, if you're listening. He's definitely not listening. Uh, well, Simon, like I said, thank you for going on the show. It's been a pleasure. It's been a really good chat. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season, but obviously after Saturday. Absolutely. And you. Cheers, Joe. Thank you.